We know the IRS has long arms and wants to reach into our pockets and grab a little anytime we make money. Yeah, even that pocket in the pocket on your jeans that grandpa kept his watch in. And you keep your dentine ice or Tic Tacs in, right? There's no place to hide from the IRS. But you can be a tax wise investor. Sometimes we call it a tax efficient investor. The more you know about how investments are taxed, the more tax efficient you'll be. In this series, we'll run down the types of investment taxes you'll encounter and ways to minimize them. First, we'll look at a capital gain. Think of the word capital as money. It's often used to describe the money you need to start and run a business. For our tax discussion here, we'll think of capital simply as money. For us, for you, a capital gain is a money gain, a monetary gain. You had a financial gain. You started with a certain amount, invested it, it grew to another amount. The difference between the two amounts is the monetary gain or capital gain. One could also have a capital loss if the investment went south in value and is worth less than what you started with. A capital gain is the difference between the amount invested and the amount you end up with when you sell the investment. If you start with $20,000 and it grows to $30,000, the $10,000 difference is the capital gain. Had it declined in value to $15,000, the $5,000 difference is the capital loss. A capital gain is taxable and a capital loss is deductible. And unless the loss comes from the sale of your house, your car, artwork, jewelry, Junior's motorcycle. Well, you get the idea. Personal stuff. A point to consider, a capital gain is not taxable unless, unless you actually sell the investment. If you still own the investment while it grows in value, the gain is not taxable. In other words, you're not taxed along the way as the investment grows. Likewise, if you own an investment that has fallen in value, you don't have a capital loss for tax purposes. Those scenarios are often referred to as paper gains or losses or unrealized gains or losses. Sure, you realize whether your investment is up or down. So just substitute unrealized with the phrase, I didn't sell and lock it in. Uncle Sam, by the way of the IRS, likes to incentivize certain behaviors. Behaviors it perceives will benefit society and the economy such as home ownership with mortgage interest deductibility, saving for retirement with IRAs and 401ks with deductible contributions, and investing in the great companies of our country. The incentive? A special tax rate for capital gains that is usually lower than your marginal tax rate. How long you own the investment is the key to how much tax you'll pay on the gain. If you sell an investment before a year is up, that's considered a short-term capital gain and it gets taxed at your regular, ordinary income rate. Keep it for longer than a year, which could be a year and a day, and you'll get the more favorable long-term capital gains rate. And that rate is either zero, 15%, or 20%, depending on your taxable income. In 2024, if you're single with income of $47,025 or less, you won't pay tax on your long-term capital gains. Income from there up to $518,900 finds singles in the 15% capital gains rate. And above that, it's a 20% capital gains rate. Married filing jointly with $94,050 or less income won't be taxed on their long-term gains. Married with income in the next range, that's up to $583,750, get the 15% cap gains rate. And beyond that, they'll get the 20% rate. Unlike the progressive federal tax brackets for ordinary income, once your income exceeds a threshold, all your capital gains are taxed at that rate. All right, there it is, your capital gains primer. But wait, there's more. Uncle Sam's Internal Revenue Service hasn't let off the Americana armbar just because you're already tapping out. He's got to check you first for a possible net investment income tax submission. Yeah, 
a 3.8% surtax on top, on top of the capital gains tax. Single filers with modified adjusted gross income over $200,000 and couples over $250,000 are subject to the net investment income tax. The income includes taxable interest, dividends, gains, annuities, rents, and royalties. We'll look at that tax in another episode. Yeah, there are a lot of variables when it comes to taxes, and settling up with Uncle Sam on your capital gains is no exception. The cost of paying a professional would likely be a bargain when compared to your personal cost of time, temperament, and tax trickiness tolerance. Spend your time doing what you do best and gladly pay professionals to do what they do best.